Oh, hey, oh, whip What is going on? How's everybody doing? All right, all right, all right. Chicken noodle soup with a soda on the side. What? All right, hello, hello. Wow, this is going to be something else. What's going on, everybody? Jay Hayes here. So today I'm not going to be doing a review. I'm actually going to be doing something a little more information or tutorial-ish. So in the live the other day, I was going over the news, and something that they covered was how a lot of the people are getting affected. First, they used, obviously, the flavors. And then they sidetracked from flavors to THC. And then they went from THC to vitamin E. And then they went from vitamin E to chemical burns. So apparently with all these cases going on, a lot of what they're finding, they still don't know what the culprit is, right? Like they did the test on all those other juices, which I'll go ahead and I'll post over here, this, this little jammy, where they tested all the different cartridges from illegal products and then legal products, and they found some questionable things in it, and I also did a video on that. However, I mentioned in the video when they were talking about the soldering points going bad. And of course, people took what I said in that live and went to the extreme. Automatically, every single sub ohm tank has soldered coils. I specifically said in that video, do not take what I'm saying right now for what it's worth. You know, I'm just shooting it from the hip. So now there's people going around to different comments of different videos and saying, oh, well, you know, you got to be careful because of that soldering point. It's melting. So I did a little bit of research and then I did some more. So what I have in front of me is a drawer of different coils. And then I also have pod systems ripped apart. Okay, so there's a couple things we have to discuss here. First off, you have PG and VG, right? Now, the boiling points for those respective... Uh, liquids would be, I think, 370 to 375 for PG, and then 550 to 560, I may be off a little bit there, for VG. That is when you start to get vapor, okay? So that tells you that PG burns before VG does. Because something hits 370 degrees, let's just say you have a 100% PG-based liquid. So it's going to start to vape at 370, and then you could do 380, 390, whatever. You have to keep in mind that that coil is going to be a lot cooler because that cotton that is in there, or in some of these cases, silica wick, which I'm sure a lot of you did not know about, uh, is getting heated up, and then that liquid itself is keeping the coil cool. A lot of people have this inconceived notion that you could vape without cotton. Now, now, technically you can, however, the cotton that's inside of a coil is not just there to wick, it's also to keep it cool and to keep residual juice going through capillary action, but to keep the coil cool. So as much as that vape is 370 degrees, once you let go of that button, it's gonna cool down really, really quick. So what those numbers mean to me is I said, okay, if they're talking about soldering, burning off, there's a couple things I need to do. Number one, I have to get a bunch of coils, and I have to find which coils actually have soldered wire in them. I was unable to find any modern-day sub-ohm tank. Any! Okay? I know that's that sounds crazy. The last hundred sub-ohm tanks in the past year, or two years, or even three years, four years in some of these, do not have solder joints, where you start to see solder joints are not even in the cardamizers, are not even in the clearomizers, you know, that the little jammies are being filled with. Not even then. I'm not saying that there isn't any, but it's extremely rare. I'll show you how they work and how that goes down. But where you do see a lot of the soldering, if in fact we're believing what the media is telling us, is in closed pod systems. Typically because to do a positive and negative, you have to do two prongs because it's a pod, a, a pod or a, a rectangular product. So you have to do two prongs, attach the wires to that, one's positive, one's negative. And a lot of these other coils, obviously I'll show you when I bring it down, you have 
two different wires. You have one that is on the inside of the insulator, and then one is on the outside, so you have positive and ground. Then a little plug goes in that holds it together, sort of like how they did it on the sub tank back in 2014 or 2015. So you still see a lot of that today. So that soldering argument cannot be relevant for... I'm not saying that there's not sub ohm tanks out there, but I could tell you that I've tested a lot, and I could not find one. I have seen a couple, I just don't remember what they are. I'm sure they're on my channel somewhere. But then I said, okay, if, if we're using the argument that the PG or the VG depends on what they're breaking down or using the cutting or the thickening agent for these different oils or for these different juices and finding out that it melts the solder, first off, you have to find the culprit, the problem, which I could not do with the exception of the pods. So let's just say you fill these up with a certain juice that requires a certain amount of temperature to heat up the vape, meaning that it's all VG-based. Very unlikely, but it is possible because a lot of things are PG-based. This is where things get to be a little crazy. Solder typically heats up at about 370 degrees, unless of course you're doing brazing or silver, and then that's a whole nother story. But the chemical burns that they're talking about in the media that I shared, they were talking about silver and copper. Okay, soldering is not typically done with those, those specific materials. That's for more industrial, commercial. I don't wanna to get too far into that, but we have to focus a little bit of fire on there. Soldering is when you take, it's a spool of wire, you can either get it lead or lead free, typically you want to use lead free for a multitude of reasons, but if it doesn't work as good as what the lead base does, then you have flux, you dip it into flux, you clean it off, whatever. But the point is you heat up that metal that's on the spool, it creates a little liquid drop of metal, it drops down, you hold the wire there, you let go, it dries, it gets hard, now it becomes a metal that's holding that metal to that positive or that negative. So that is going to be used if they have no way to make a connection to the positive and negative like they do inside of a coil. Because you have to remember, as it screws down, that's going to be your negative. And directly in the center that's in the insulator is your positive where that little pin is. This little jammy right here on the bottom. Let's just use the assumption that 400 degrees is what they use for soldering. The coil itself, if you've ever built a coil, if you've ever done anything, you'll know that the coils are going to heat up from the inside of the center of the coil mechanism itself and then work its way down. But you're not going to hold down the firing button or inhale that long to where the heat is going to transfer that hot, that hot to the actual connection. I have no idea why I said to like that, to the actual connection. It just, it's not going to get that hot. There's no way, especially if there's juice in there. This goes with that test that they did with the formaldehyde, where they heated up to like 9 volts, which even I don't vape at. A lot of mods don't even go that high. Plus, they also did a test where they held it down where there was no juice in there, which no one's going to vape like that because it's going to burn your throat. But that's something that they used a couple of years back to prove that there was all these toxic metals involved. That... Please, we're not even going to get into that argument because that is already mixed. That does not matter. What I find super ironic is all the stuff that's going on now, as all these states are banning, you have all of these companies and, and labs and all these tests coming out, and then here comes IQOS sliding right on up in there. Just like everything is banning, here comes IQOS. I'm, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I, I'm not a big fan of that. What I am a big fan of is showing you things and then you make up your decision. I don't want to say hopefully based off mine because mine is very opinionated. That's what this channel is. But I didn't want to make this opinionated. I wanted to give you my perception of what it is that I talked about in a live. It's just I don't like these people going around to these comments, even in my own comments and on other channels saying, oh, well, you got to worry about that soldering point. I'm here to educate you. Don't worry about a soldering point in a sub ohm coil. Okay, unless you got one of those three that I'm talking about, I cannot remember the name of them. I'm going to bring this down. I did take a lot of these pods apart so you can see what I'm looking at so you can understand, okay, this is soldered, this is hard pressed, this is nixed, this is curved and pinched. There's different things for different applications. Again, keep in mind that a lot of the pinched and soldering you're going to see is on closed pod systems. Understand that.
Let me just show you this. So without further ado. Basically, what I'm going to show you is exactly what I was talking about on the top. These are all the coils. Now, I have a whole lot more, and it really doesn't matter because 99.9% .9 of these, I'm sure that there's one that I have that is, in fact, soldered. But these are all the up-to-date coils. And what I was saying earlier is, uh, let me just pick out a random one. It, it really doesn't matter. Let's just... Let's just take this one, right? Now, this is, I believe, a crown coil. No, that is, uh, that's the Vandy Vape something coil. But let me zoom this in and show you how that these work. Now, they're all typically the same. It doesn't, it doesn't matter which coil I use, what I give you as an example. You'll see these little plugs on the inside of them. You see them, these little jammies? And usually, if you inspect it, you'll see a wire there. Or like on this one, if we spin this enough, you may see a wire. Well, you can see clearly that oh, you have a wire there. So, right. And then what happens is when you pop this off, you're going to see. You see? So you have a wire on the inside. That's your positive, And then your negative is going to be on the inside of this. See? So there's one and then there's the other. And all that separates it is a little rubber insulator. Now, whether I use this one. Or if I do it to the original one that I pulled off, it's the same type of thing. You see the two wires? Those are not soldered or soldered. Those are actually press fitted in with this little fitting. And they're all like that. It, it doesn't matter what brand you use. Yeah, see like that right there, you can see the wire right here. And that's brand new. Baby Beast coils, same type of deal. It's once you wrote, well, I think I just opened Baby Beast style coil. This, for example, this is an absolute monstrosity, right? TF-16. Now this is literally the size of a dripper, but it's the same type of deal. Once you remove this plug, and here, well, you can already see it. You have a wire here and then a wire there. The wire here is going to be your positive because that's what's by this ring. And then this is your negative. And they're never soldered. I, I feel like it would be way too much work to do this. However, now that we've taken a look at these coils, let me put this back together. So let's just say you have one like this that is not put together. You see how that works? Put that little insulator in. And there's your positive right there. I really want to like do this a little bit better than what I'm doing now. All right, you see how that stays? And then you take the little plug. See that wire right here? That's it. It's that simple. And sometimes when you get a coil that don't fire, it's probably because one of those are not connected or it's cut short. And that's that coil. However, then you have coils like this, like this, this is a 4X pod, or that, no, th this is a jewel pod. Let me put this, let me zoom this out a little bit here. So this right here, this is the 4X pod, this is the jewel from one of those disposable jammies. This is another one. Now, there's something that I want to show you in all of these. Well, not specifically this one, but really these closed pods. Closed pods means that there's juice inside of it. So you may see a little bit of residual oil get on my hands. And keep in mind that this is very high levels of nicotine, and it is, in fact, transdermal, meaning if I touch it with my fingers and I leave it there and I don't clean it off, I may start to feel it a little bit. But What's important to note is what I found on the inside of the 4X pod. Let me try to zoom in a little bit. Now, if you've been vaping for a while, you're going to know what this is. This is actually not cotton. It is a silica wick. You would see these in old school clear misers. This, unlike cotton, does not burn. I could take a flame literally right now, try to burn this, and it will not, I repeat, not burn. See, that's burning the juice off of it. Now I burn that off, you see? You don't see anything seared. You just see the juice that was on there, residual, on fire. Let me give you a little bit of a better example. Now this is, I'm holding this to a torch. I don't want to get burnt, so I'm just going to show you right here. See how that does not burn? You see that? It does not burn. It gets hot. Very hot. But it does not start on fire. You can see that. There's no seared jammies. Nothing. That is a reflection you're seeing. You see that? It doesn't, it doesn't fact get flaky. But that's dry as hell. Now, this is how people would vape. 
back in the day, you would make your coils and then you would use this as your wicking material. Not necessarily bad, but it's, it's kind of outdated. However, what I find ironic is when you take, what is this one? This is, this is one without the wick. Now, this is what the silica came out of. I just pulled it out. Now, this one here is a jewel pod, and you could see that it's inside of here. I did not know, well, we're going to find out right now as we pull this out. Would you look at that? It's the same type of thing. It is not cotton. It's actually silica. See that? See, now that right there is the juice burning. That's it. It's all dry. And you can see it's all dry now. Just like that. You see? Nothing. That's how that works. And this is what was inside. And you can see it's not hot at all. It's literally just dry now. Whoop. And it's crystal white. See that? Never used. That is what's inside of a jewel pod. Oddly enough, this is one from a disposable jimmy. You can see the wire still attached. That actually is cotton, but you can see the wire that's in there. And we're going to go over this. I'm just going to kind of pull this up. Yeah, that is in fact cotton. That is not that is not a silica wick. You see? That I I really don't need to burn it cuz that will in fact start on fire. Yes. Sorry, it's all jiggly. But you can see that that is, in fact, cotton. Let's take a look at the inside here. It smells like a grape or something. But do you see how this is? It's going to be very... I can't zoom in anymore. But do you see this right here? See how this is connected? See that? That right there, that little point, is your soldering joint right here. So this is, in fact, soldered down. Really wish I could zoom in for you to see. A little bit difficult, but you have to realize that the reason why that is is because, first off, there's nothing to really press the positive and negative in. They have separate posts that have to be essentially soldered down together. This right here is a lost vape pod. Everybody knows this right here, but check this out on the inside. Their contact isn't actually soldered. It's press fit or pinched. You see? Again, I cannot, yeah, I cannot zoom. That is all that you're going to get. So what they do is they put the wire in there, they press it down, totally fine. Now, the reason why we're going, well, I'll we'll get into the reason why we're going into the soldering. When they're talking about these chemicals, again, it has nothing to do with products like this that you rebuild because they're not soldered. But I, I don't know if I really, really agree with that assessment and argument. I think that... There are closed pods that do that. There are. I mean, we're looking at them, right? Like here, oh, this is another one. I don't, I don't, these are from, in fact, those one hitter jammies. Okay, so this right here is from a stick. And you can see it's, I don't know what kind of wire that is. We're going to see in about two seconds. If it is magnetic, we know that it's canthal. And it is not magnetic at all. However, it looks like what it is on is magnetic, but the wire, yeah, if you look, watch, the wire itself is not magnetic. It's, I guess the post that it's on is canthal, but, oh my God, I wish you could see. Okay, so you see here, you see this little blob is in fact a soldering joint. And then over here, you'll see it again, the blob. It's very, it's very, very difficult for me to pick up and show you at the same time, just because of the angle that I'm at. Now you can kind of gauge what is on the interior of these products and why or how they work. But oddly enough, the one that's in the Lost Fape, though, is in fact cotton, and so is the little disposable jammies, which actually kind of... Wow, that is impressive that the pods that you see for the 4X or for the Jewel are using a silica wick. I really wanted you to understand what was inside of these and what could possibly uh, be their explanation for where we're at. This is the Jewel, and then this is the 4X. Wait, I always get these. Or this one's the 4X. 
Now this one's the jewel, but you'll see again, look at the wire. See how that is? So they're not actually soldered in. The bottom line is I don't think any of them, any of what I showed you is the problem, right? I don't even think that that's a problem in any of the other devices. Just because a coil gets hot in the center and then eventually the legs get hot, but even the legs that are in the post or in the little ports or whatever it is are not going to get that hot to where it's going to break down the solder. The coil, yes. Is the coil that close? No, because when you use a soldering iron, you actually have to take the needle tip point of the soldering gun and then put that onto the solder to melt it. And then you can't hold it away unless, of course, it's like 4,000 degrees. But just no, it's, it's not. However, I will tell you this, that I think it's odd and peculiar that the pod style jammies, the little stealthy one hitters, that you ha you get already pre-filled, like the Mojo's, the Stigs, all you is cotton. But the pod style devices, the Forex and the Jewel, use silica. Is it not also awkward that the Forex and the Jewel are almost identical on the inside, down to the cut of the wires that is inside? Now, oddly enough, I legitimately thought that they were going to be soldered to that little gold section. They weren't. They were just kind of pushed in and the leg pushed up. I I would have never guessed that, but I've never had a need to open that. It's just that really spiked my interest when they were trying to blame it on the chemical. Now, I know what a lot of people are going to say is it's more propaganda bullshit. It's more fear mongering. While I agree with that, it still was interesting, that argument. And that is something that I can prove without having a science degree or being a doctor. There's a couple tests that I could do to test, to test that metal to figure out what is the alloys or the properties of each of those metals, but it doesn't really matter. It's probably stainless steel. I highly doubt that Jewel is using nichrome. Like, <laughs> no, I just, I don't. You know, I had a device, the VPC Diamond, that had a little attachment to where it would do the readout of the resistance of the coils. I can't remember what they came out to, but they were, they were very, very high. Like 1.8, 1.9. That wouldn't make much sense for that to be stainless steel and be a 1.9. It's regular round, spaced out, five wraps, 28 gauge probably. The fumes from it? No, I don't feel it. A soldering melting down? No. Nope. I really legitimately, without, you know, listen, I'm not going to give you some spiel or some some stupid statement. I really legitimately feel like it's something that is inside of those THC cartridges. I would love to see the test of somebody that's vaping a liquid that has that problem. Dude, I've been vaping for almost 10 years now, and I have no issues. My lungs are literally, I would say transparent, but that would be weird. My lungs look fantastic. I'm not saying that there isn't legitimate health concerns of vaping illegal stuff. Find out what's in that and then dissect that and then do the bans. Don't use the children backing up because that's what, that's what they've done. You know, first it was all about, I, I already explained this in the beginning. They've kind of veered away from that. They still like to use that number of those health problems, but they stopped saying that people were dying because of that. Well, some states still say that. However, it's been a redirect back to its, it's, it's directed towards kids with the flavor. You notice that it's back to the flavor. People need to look up the IQOS. Go watch this video. They have flavored IQOS. I don't know if they're selling them directly in the States, the tropical mango tobacco one, but why is that okay? That's a flavor. I, and if anybody watches this in a, in a political situation or a position, lower the nicotine. And if the problem is the pods, then remove the pods. As much as that sucks for a lot of people, I'm sure that all the vapors, all the hobbyists, the people that use devices like this, that you don't see anybody in the hospital, I, there's a challenge for you. Go look at anybody that vapes. 
and see if any of them have a type of system like this that's been in the hospital. Then let's take it from there. I've kept it real. Hopefully you can too.